Hey, what's up everybody? My name's Russ with rwgresearch.com. Here we are again. It's been another week. I usually wait to the end, but today is, uh, what is today? The 20th. All right, so we're back to these experiments. Uh, yeah, most of you did uh, think about this and listen to instructions, and, and I think it was very helpful. Uh, for those of you who were questioning, didn't understand, or um, gave a different answer than I was uh, thinking of, um, that might be okay. But I am going to tell you what these components A and B are, and we're going to give another scenario, and this one, this one's going to take some thinking. Um, yep, so let's get started. Um, so we had a pipe. Oh, actually, I want to, I want to bring up I actually want to discuss this before we move on. So I left you hanging with all the non-answers. Um, and I asked a simple question, which was, does this motor, okay, does this motor consume the energy in this scenario, where this scenario goes from a tank to atmosphere? So what is the pipe in this scenario? It's a limiter, right? So you've got a thousand PSI and a thousand liter tank and it's going to go out to atmosphere. Well, guess what? It's going to go out to atmosphere at the diameter of this pipe allows it to, basically. Right? And here, we've got a thousand PSI through a motor to atmosphere. What is this motor? It's nothing more than a limiter. So the higher the resistance this motor poses on this tank pressure, the longer it's going to take to deplete to deplete this tank. However, it didn't change the fact that the air motor didn't consume the energy if you look at it like this. So, in my opinion, and, and you guys had other opinions, but in my opinion, this motor did not consume the energy because the energy is still released here versus here. It just regulates it at a different rate but it still goes away, it still goes to the atmosphere. So if you start with a potential, you go to atmosphere, it doesn't matter what you put here, it doesn't consume the energy, it regulates it. Okay, that's, that's very important. So well, let's go ahead and get rid of these scenarios. And I asked a lot of questions. I don't know if I'll remember them all. Uh, in three here, we added a flywheel to the motor, right, to the air motor. And we turned it into component B. So I'm going to discuss what component B could be. So here's the thing. Um, let's move the date up here. Here's the thing, um, you can only do so much with air. You can only explain this idea so much with air. Today will probably be the last air thought, and if I'm really feeling into it, we'll move on to something different, but in this series of thoughts. So if you understand the thoughts, you're going to grasp the concept. If you don't grasp the concept and the thoughts, you won't understand what I'm talking about. Uh, you have to excuse the background noise. So here we are. We have component A and we have component B. All right, component A, in my viewpoint, is a, a capacitor. Okay, and component B, all right, I'm gonna put L and C. Okay, inductor. All right, so L and C, inductor and cap. Um, you can see that okay. It's pretty small. I write a little bigger. <clears throat> so A is considered a capacitor. B 
is considered a um, inductor. I hope that noise isn't too loud. A is a capacitor. B is an inductor. Okay, sorry about the distraction. They may keep doing it. I just have to ignore it. Okay, so component A and B, you got a capacitor and an inductor. This is also a capacitor. Um, this could be a battery, but for this analogy, I'm going to be using the idea of capacitors, okay? So what happens in a capacitor, right? You have a stored charge. What happens in an inductor? You build up a magnetic field. You could call that magnetism in that inductor. You could call it a flywheel if you wanted to because it has electrical momentum via magnetism through current flow. Okay, does that make sense? So that charge, when this gets to equal pressure, uh, so to answer the question, when this gets to 500 and this gets to 500, this is moving at max velocity, okay, max velocity. And when that happens, this 500 in this motor, again, in a perfect world, don't forget, air is terribly inefficient. This 500 PSI is going to start moving over here. And if everything was 100% efficient, you would actually end up with 1,000 PSI here and 0 PSI there. Okay. This is a very important concept. If you can't get this, you won't understand what I'm doing next. Okay. You just won't understand it. I'm going to talk about air. But you have to realize that in a perfect world, this is what would happen. You could transfer a thousand PSI to this tank and this one would be completely empty because this motor would be a motor until the tanks were equal. Once they were equal, it would start being a pump and it would actually extract the air pressure and push it into here. Okay. You got that? If not, go back and watch this. <laughs> 